is Julie, and this is Sunday School for Cargill United Methodist Church, April 4th, Easter Sunday, 2021. And we're in Walmart here in Janesville in the greeting card aisle. And we see Easter cards behind us. We're going to turn around so they're not backwards and flip the, the uh, camera around. We're here today to pick out an Easter card for my friend, Pastor Songman. She sent me the most beautiful, wonderful birthday card, and I wanted to send her an Easter card um, because I so appreciated it, and I really want to wish her a very happy Easter. So let's take a look at some of our choices. Here we go. Here's one. Oh, isn't this cute? This kitty has bunny teeth and bunny ears, and it says Happy Easter. Okay, let's take a look. It says, here comes Peter Cat in tail. Oh, that's funny. I'm not really sure that that's the message that I want to send to her at Easter, but I do like it. I really want my Easter card for Pastor Songman to really kind of tell what Easter is all about. Because when she sent a birthday card to me, she really truly wrote about celebrating me as a person. Oh, this one's cute. It looks like it's a piece of chocolate in the shape of a dinosaur with bunny ears. And the inside says, hope your Easter is terrific. Okay, I like it, but again, I'm not sure that that's I mean, I want her to have a terrific day, but I'm not sure that that's the message that I want to send to her. I mean, is that what Easter is really all about? Okay, here is one. This little critter is eating a, a candy. Humphy Ether. I'm not even sure what that says. Okay, so we're not going to go with that one. Oh, this is cute. Here is a puppy, and he's dying his Easter egg in the potty. Love it. Love it. This could be the one. Sometimes not finding Easter eggs can be a really good thing. Okay, maybe not. Let's see. How about this one? Why did Peter Rabbit cross the road? Dogs, big dogs, big neighborhood dogs. Happy Easter. Again, that's hilarious, but you know, what is Easter all about? Here's one that's fuzzy and soft. Hope Easter brings a fuzzy bunny feeling to your heart. Fuzzy bunny feeling. Well, I do want her to have a fuzzy bunny feeling, but I'm not sure that that's really what Easter is all about. We have Snoopy, we have a bunny, lots of Easter eggs. You know, this makes me really wonder, what is Easter really all about? If I send my friend Pastor Songman a card, what am I hoping for her? Am I wishing her a day filled with fuzzy bunnies? Am I wishing her a day filled with baby chips? Do I want her to have chocolates that are in the shape of dinosaurs? What am I really wishing for her? Let's go back to my house and do some research and then come back and look for a card or maybe make one for her with our own message. Okay. So we're actually at my school now, and we're going to continue our lesson uh, after our trip to Walmart. So I did do some research and found out a lot of great information uh, about Easter. And I, I feel like that in order to, um, to really tell the story, we need some background information. So here we go. It's hard to tell the story of Easter and really understand it without a little background information. So, many years ago, God made people. God loved them, but they were sinners. In other words, 
they did things that went against what God said is right. Throughout time, all people have sinned. That includes you and I. And we all deserve to be judged for our sins. But God had a plan. That plan was to save all people who believe. That plan included having Jesus come to live on earth as a human. While on earth, Jesus lived a perfect life. That means he lived a life without sin. Even though he lived without sin, some people on earth did not like him. These people nailed him to a cross and let him die. After three days in a tomb, he rose from the dead. In other words, he was resurrected. He saw a few of his followers um, proving that he rose from the dead and that he was God's son. Even though God's son died, this was God's plan to have Jesus take the punishment for our sins by dying so that anyone who believes doesn't have to face judgment and die. God's plan shows his overwhelming, everlasting, inclusive love for each and every one of us, you and I. Jesus' life paid for our sins. We just have to believe. What a beautiful plan. So now the Easter part of that story. At Easter, we as Christians are celebrating Jesus's resurrection. As Christians or followers of Christ, we believe that the resurrection shows that sin and despair are not the end of our stories. We believe the resurrection gives us hope of life, even though we are sinners. We can choose this hope, this everlasting life in heaven with God the Father, if only we accept this wonderful gift that we're being offered. We can accept this gift by believing. Now, there's a Bible passage, of course. There's many Bible passages that help to tell the Easter story. The one that we're going to focus on today is John 20, 1 through 18. This passage tells us about some of the people's reactions when Jesus was resurrected from the dead. It tells us how a woman named Mary Magdalene was so overjoyed that Jesus was alive again. The story also tells us how Mary Magdalene told others about this wonderful news. And here's the verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? 
They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Arabic, Rabboni. Jesus said, do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to the father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. And that's the end of the reading. So the question is, what can we learn from this passage? This passage demonstrates that Jesus Christ offers us hope. Mary Magdalene had hope when Jesus was resurrected and she thought he was dead. We can have hope, even though we are all sinners. It's a gift for anyone who is willing to accept it. It's a gift that is greater than any of us could ever imagine. This passage also shows us that we can be like Mary Magdalene and spread the hope that Jesus gives to us. Each of us can tell others about church, Jesus, Easter, and hope. So if we think back to the greeting card uh, at Walmart that we tried to buy for Pastor Songman, I will admit that I really liked the bunnies, chickies, and colorful eggs that were on the greeting cards in Walmart. And I think it's okay to send and receive cards like that. It's also good to have fun, uh, to enjoy chocolate eggs, Easter baskets, Easter egg hunts, and time with families. Those are all good things. However, I know now after doing some research that I want to wish way more than just bunnies, chickies, and colorful eggs to my friend, Pastor Songman, and other special people in my life. Along with those fun things, I also wish them the joy that comes with understanding the real true story of Easter, the resurrection, the everlasting love of God the Father, and the marvelous gift of hope and life that is being offered to everyone. Would you please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for Easter cards, Easter eggs, chocolate, candy, and other Easter fun. But we thank you most for helping us to better understand the story of Easter and the true gift that is being offered to each and every one of us if we will just accept it and believe. In your name we pray, amen. Now, by the way, I did end up with an Easter card for Pastor Songman and I gave her a card but it had no bunnies, no chickies, or no eggs. Even though I liked those things, I left all of the frills out. It only has one spe special, simple message. And if you would like to see the card, stop by and see her sometime at church. Now, I also gave her a bag of Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, I bet she will give you one if you stop by and see my card. Thank you for joining us for Sunday School for Cargill United Methodist Church this Easter Sunday. And we hope and pray to 
See you back in church when everything fully opens. Bye-bye.